Motadzi Tabanaku Si. Welcome into another short edition of the Worst Fantasy Show. I am your host, Jack Lucene. Hey, today we're talking about the best apps to play fantasy football. I'm going to give you my five favorites. But before we get started, I need you guys' help and support out there. Part of why this particular episode is so great is I don't have sponsors. I don't do ad reads. I don't have any of that stuff. So I have no affiliation. Therefore, to help grow the show, I need you guys to help obviously like and subscribe for all the algorithm bullshit. But more importantly, if you guys could send some questions or some more show ideas that you want to see, especially for short episodes, send those to at Jack Lusne on all my socials, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, or hit me up by email worst sports channel at gmail.com so we'll get right into it a very short one today the five best apps for fantasy football i think number one is pretty obvious to most of you uh fanatics out there the king of the fantasy football app nowadays is sleeper and if you're not playing on sleeper then you are asleep at the wheel my friend i had one league last year that was not yet converted all of my other leagues out of 20 were on sleeper i basically spent uh the last couple of seasons getting all of my leagues onto one app i picked my favorite sleeper is by far my favorite besides the fact that uh it's aesthetically pleasing uh the ease of use of the app i feel like is number one it just also offers i feel like the widest range of selections for what I would call the regular player. So obviously, you know, I've said before on different episodes, fantasy football, you could almost compare it to Dungeons and Dragons. If you just want to be able to play the game in the main quest, I feel like Sleeper is far and away number one as far as, you know, your redraft and your dynasty fantasy football leagues, which makes up the majority of the fantasy football landscape out there. However, becoming more and more popular on the scene is what's known as best ball fantasy football, where you select a roster of players and it automatically accrues the points from your best performances. And for that, my personal favorite is underdog. And, you know, sleeper and underdog, I feel like have become really the two most popular because they listen to the fans, number one. and really focused on a combination of aesthetics and ability slash ease of use. So underdog, especially me being in Quebec, Canada, I don't have access to certain apps like DraftKings doesn't work for me. And so already just the fact that I'm able to get on and play and access underdog is very appealing. Uh, They provide a multitude of different sports which is a lot of fun you know i do a lot of betting on basketball and hockey so i've really enjoyed my initial experience on underdog this was actually my first year playing on underdog through the entire season i broke about even you know i didn't really like win a shit ton of money or anything there's lots of like really uh astute best ball drafters and accounts out there that i would welcome you to go and seek out and follow on twitter but for me as far as the primary two apps that i focused on last year and that i played on last year for i would say 90 percent of my personal fantasy football it was all through sleeper and underdog and that was a personal choice again this show too small for anyone to give a fuck I don't got no sponsors. I don't got no ad reads. I don't got nobody telling me what to say or what to do. This is just straight up my personal opinion. Coming in at number three, a little bit of a traditionalist pick here. I'm actually going with Yahoo. And the reason being uh, is that if you are like me and some players out there and you happen to play multiple fantasy sports especially if you do fantasy hockey yahoo is king still for fantasy hockey and to me it's still the best for fantasy basketball now sleeper does offer a variation of basketball now hey sleeper if you're listening we need regular fantasy basketball on your site if you want to offer fantasy hockey 
I would be willing to convert there too. But until they do decide to actually run dailies, because right now the format on Sleeper is that you pick your game out of the week that your player is going to play. Most fantasy basketball leagues are what are called weekly leagues, where you are accruing points for every game of the week that your player plays. That's why part of the strategy is, you know, picking a player that plays four or five times versus a player that only plays two or three times. Again, lots of different strategies go into what I call the weeklies, which are primarily consisting of fantasy basketball, hockey, and um, baseball. But getting back to the football, Yahoo also effectively runs fantasy football. And if I did not have access to Sleeper, I think I probably would uh, use Yahoo the most. Uh, Again, combination of ease of use. Now, if you are a commissioner on Yahoo, sometimes it can be restrictive, which I don't like. It's much easier, I find, running leagues on Sleeper. Uh, Again, that's why Sleeper is number one. But because of the trifecta of sports, uh, you know, that I still play, uh, fantasy basketball and fantasy hockey on Yahoo, and the fact that it's still reasonable for football, that's why it comes in for me at number three. At number four, is fan tracks. And the reason I put fan tracks here is because at a certain point, if you get really deep diving into uh, the fantasy football world and you want to go even deeper, you want to be a true hardcore of the game. Again, re uh, going back to that analogy of Dungeons and Dragons. If you want to explore every corner of the game and every setting that's possible, fan tracks, And also, you know, I will mention MFL, but they, to me, are the secondary in terms of the real uh, being able to finick with all the different settings and really style your leagues the way you want. I feel like Fantrax has the edge, especially there was a recent controversy. I'm not familiar with MFL. I don't play on MFL. I have not played on MFL in like a decade. I know that there's some kind of paywall now and they recently increased their price. I'm not familiar with all of that. I don't give a shit. I'm picking fan tracks because to me, it's a little bit easier. I have done some slow drafts uh, on fan tracks in the past, uh, some dynasty league formats in the past that were a little bit more in depth. Uh, so if I was going to play in one of those like really hardcore leagues, that's, that's where I would go basically. And number five to wrap this up is actually something I literally just discovered. I'm going to be having the creator of the app on uh, the worst interview show to have, uh, you know, a discussion about how he created the app, where the idea came from and all of this, because I think it's really great, uh, great. And right now I have been participating in what is essentially a beta test on the app. Uh, And it is called the Generations app. So make sure that you go give them a follow on Twitter. It's, uh, I think, Generations underscore FF um, or Generations Fantasy Football. If you search that, you'll be able to find it. Uh, But it's run by Imran uh, Perez and others. Uh, Imran uh, is, and potentially the other CEO I I may be having on the show, but for sure Imran. Uh, But basically what it is, is it's a fantasy football app that can run year round. So it's a lot of fun. It's not something that I'm really looking at for like betting or anything, but literally today, um, you know, fantasy hockey and basketball are winding down and I'm getting into the championships. And so there's not really, there's no, there's not really any more moves to make kind of had that itch. I went over to the generations app and I just switched a bunch of my lineup around because what it is, is you get to set a lineup daily with historical and current NFL players. So basically any player that has played for at least, I think it's three seasons, is included for not every single player that's ever existed, but a huge swath of them. And so you are able to kind of mix and match historical figures like Dan Marino and Joe Montana with current day wide receivers like Tyreek Hill uh, or Cooper Cup. And you can you know, really play with your lineups and it picks randomly 
a game from a year and a day, and it tells you which game it picked, and it gives you the stats from that game. So it's, again, really cool as a pastime. I think it's going to really catch a lot of steam once it gets established. And so this is your chance to get in on the ground floor. Um, and like I said, make sure you super kick that subscribe button, follow the show, because we are going to have the creator of that app on the show. And I've got a bunch of great interviews lined up this off season. So yeah, help out the algorithm, help follow the show. And as always, I will catch you guys on the flip side. Ha, 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 ha.